Vamos com isso. 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 Vamos com I got the promise to be a big, a, a good boy now. <laughs> ដំណើរសហព្ញារួមនឹងសហមិត្តវីនោមុខបៃវៈសហមណាការគឺនៅវៈទី <coughs> Sydney Scanberg, some change. He said yeah, he got it once, yeah. Shanberg. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. We're grateful for some the extra time. Mr. Shamberg, I hope you can hear us. I think I heard your voice just Thank you. If I can just continue on, on this topic we just discussed about um, the discipline of Khmer Rouge soldiers and people that you observed, uh, we have a, on the case file a U.S. A copy of a U.S. cable, which is essentially a summary of an article that you wrote uh, in September 1975. This is document E3 slash 3355. E3 slash 3355. Uh, it's dated, um, the press summary itself is dated 18th of September 1975. Uh, I'm going to give the relevant ERNs and then I'll, I'll read a brief passage to you. Uh, in, in Khmer, this is found at 0074089789 and the pages following. In French, 00751938, and in English, 00413800. It's essentially a U United States uh, State Department's summary uh, of an article that you uh, there is attributed to you, uh, and um, as I said, it's dated 18th of September 1975. I'm only interested in a brief. Again, a brief passage here. Quote, Notes little info available on Khmer communist hierarchy. Says KR soldiers, peasant boys, but officers educated could speak French. End of quote. This is one of the documents, of course, that we sent you, Mr. Chambers. Um, is that an observation that you made uh, in relation to Khmer Rouge officers apparently being more educated and being able to speak French? Yes, it is. Because, uh, I mean, I, I heard them speaking French when we were in the embassy. Were there any other uh, features of their uh, behavior or uniform or their conduct that um, gave you the impression that they were educated people? Uh, I didn't have a lot of contact with them. Uh, the contact I did have uh, made me 
คือทวีคุณยงเคยทำปุ๊กเกอร์เมกาบนดอกบนนาหรือคล้ายตุ๊กจีบนไทยโยธีคือทำบานอ๋อให้ไอคอนตัวนี้ก็คือทำมันโดยคณิตเตอของตัวทอมนาทอมนาโน่ Thank you Just on that We're not going to have A lot of time to delve into the circumstances of your arrest, but one, and you've already given a brief summary, um, and the court has heard evidence from Mr. Rockoff about this incident. But one particular aspect uh, that that I wish to explore with you further is when you were at the. Riverside, and you were held there for a period of time. Did you observe uh, officers and their behaviour there, or were there any officers? Yes. There were, uh, the officers were having lunch. My assistant and brother. He kept going up to these officers and saying that we weren't Americans, that we were Canadians, and we just we are that we're here to record their victory. And then he was speaking in Khmer. And most of the police were there. Also said to the officers on the radio this morning, one of the generals said that the press could operate today and we will not have. So these. Officers having their lunch finally gave it. This promise is very persuasive. And said, "Let me go to the so-and-so building where your headquarters temporary headquarters in Mumbai." Let me go to the so-and-so building where your headquarters temporary headquarters in Mumbai. Let me go there with one of your officers and look at the question. Let me go there with one of your officers and look at the question. Let me go there with one of your officers and look at the question. So he said yes. So he got on the bus and his motorcycle car on the bus. They went to the front of the bus. They went to the front of the bus. And it was something like 20 minutes later or 30 minutes later. And it was a guy pointed at us. And all three of us. Young young by net near, good rock off myself, John Swain. I know John Swain. We're certain that this was it. Good. And good job, subgroup. I mean, you know, John, the young man is a very interesting subject. And the part of the problem for this trip tribunal. But he saved our lives. And he was a great man. He died a few years ago. He believed in peace. And he suffered badly under the Khmer Rouge. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to apologize to you for interrupting you. I know it's important. But in any case, it was something that stayed with me all my life. And so that is where I saw these men who finally listened to our his plea and let us go. And they took us to the police station. Just to explore very briefly aspects of that event, as I said, we don't have a lot of time to explore it extensively. Only a couple of aspects are of interest for present purposes. In your diary, you provide a, a, a detailed descri description of this. It starts on page 68. There is one particular, again, one, one aspect of the story. Um, this is 
page 68, English ERN 0089 where you describe uh, the conversation between Diff Pran and, and the, uh, the soldiers that have captured you. Quote, the insurgents had told him to take off. We don't want you, they said. We only want the big ones. But Pran knew we would be lost without him, so he talked his way onto the carrier. It was a supreme act of courage and loyalty, and it saved our lives. Those words, we don't want you, we want only the big ones. How did you hear those words? Were they conveyed to you by Dith Pran, or was it uh, otherwise? And, he, uh, and I can't think of, he told me at the time the word, the Khmer word for the big boys. But I can't remember it now. Uh, and, uh, and I, I watched it. Pran kept arguing with them. And, uh, it was an armored personnel carrier they were driving. And, and I didn't know what he was arguing for because they were, they were holding guns to our heads. And, uh, and I thought, my God, you know, if he doesn't stop, you know, Bothering them, we're going to get killed. Uh, so he got on with us. And I asked him inside the armored personnel carrier. I said, why, you know, why did you do that? He said, I knew that without me, we were going to get killed. And I thought, my God, you know, if he doesn't stop, you know, 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 or was it at any point uh, explained uh, what these words, the big ones, meant? Well, the big ones are, they probably thought we were all Americans. Thank you. Moving on to another aspect of the event, um, where you describe two Cambodian men being pushed inside the, the, the carrier in which you were, you were detained. It's on the same page. Um, and you say that they are dressed in civilian clothes, but it soon becomes clear they are military men. One of them, a large fat man with a mustache in a T-shirt and Levi's, reached behind me and tries to shave or I guess shove his wallet in my back pocket. He explains in French that he is an officer and must hide his identity. Now, just because it's also a description of the same event, uh, can we take a look at page 64 of the Killing Fields book? And this is at English ERN 0086259A. So it's your page 64, Mr. Schamberg. Oh, I, I do apologize. This is actually at page 60, 62, not 64. 62 for this uh, passage. You say the following, quote, they stopped once to pick up two men, both in civilian clothes, one of whom we knew as the number two in command of the small Khmer Navy. The Khmer Rouge clearly knew who they were, and I thought to myself, these men are going to be executed. Can I ask you, um, is, is that an accurate uh, account of, of uh, your knowledge at the time that this, one of the individuals was uh, a deputy commander of the Navy of the Khmer Republic? Yes, I didn't know it uh, uh, right away. I knew it only after we were released. And those two men were still under guard. Uh, they, were not, they were not 
của cái tầng phía anh Roman đoàn lên thì nhưng mình chạm được tầng sông thì còn chỉ riêng ở cái bông và còn một nhóm và cái bông đã lôi còn một nhóm I'm in the same boat that he is. They say the young had no had a pair of blue kneeer. So giving it to me isn't going to help. The guy that I got both died in my own. I got both that from my own. I'm going to hide and chew on the floor. I said, "Well, got no." When we were released, they were sitting outside this on the sidewalk. Phụ kế ông quay nơi lờ trên trạng phẫu Đại là miền quang tốt dìm càm phụ kế Dương từng hóa bên nâng Bạn đừng thay dương mình ai chui giấy đó phụ kế Vì nó đừng bạn đừng thế được cho nên dương có đau chân hơn Nên cứ chờ bởi vì đề vì Cát là nó không phê sân kìa mà hai cái nhóm mình ai phê lệch ở rừng nâng bàn tế Vẫn thấy cái nhóm mình ai chui với phụ kế bàn tế Hey, Jung, got your chance, ma'am. Thank you. It probably has nothing to do with this, with with your question, but I. It was a powerful day. I'm sure it was, Mr. Schamberg. Um, do you recall by any chance the name of this individual, the deputy commander of the Khmer Navy? And do you know anything as to what happened to him afterwards? I have no. I have no information of my own. And all I could do would would be to guess. And that's fine. We'll stop. We'll stop there. We won't ask you to guess. Um, I'm going to move on now to the events that essentially followed your release. But before I do that, by way of context, um, I want to ask you about a particular passage of your book where you describe um, Lon, Nol, Lon Nol and his plans to flee Phnom Penh. This will be relevant for the subsequent questions I'm going to ask you. It's at page 22 of the diary. And this is ERN 00898230, so page 22 of the diary, very short passage, you say the following quote, and I should say it's, it's dated the 5th of March, the century, quote, Rumors have crept up again that Long Nol may soon go into exile. He is one of the seven, quote, traitors, end of quote, whom the insurgents have marked for execution. Can I ask you first what you knew about the, this, um, these seven traders and what, what was the source of that information that they'd been marked for execution? Occasionally, uh, issued statements. Uh, they, they had called them the seven traders and, and they, were be, they were to be killed. And they kept repeating that. Not all of them were killed because because Lon Nol indeed did left the country with his family in the middle of the American government. He was living there a few years later. But, uh, 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 that's, that's what that is all about. Thank you. Um, if, if I could um, 
If I could read to you a, a transcript of a broadcast uh, and see whether that corresponds with the description you just gave us. This is document E3-117. It's a transcription of a, of a broadcast that is attributed to uh, the voice of NUFC, clandestine, uh, dated the 26th of February 1975. It's one of the documents that we sent you, uh, Mr. Shamber, in, in preparation for the hearing. I'm going to give the ERNs first and then read two excerpts. Khmer is at 00242308. French is at 00281432. And English is at 00166772. Mr. President, with your permission, we can also display that on the screen for, for the public because we have it in, in the Khmer language. I, I will read it for you, Mr. Schamburg. Thank you, Mr. President. If the AV unit could assist us with uh, displaying the Khmer version. Mr. Schamberg, it reads as follows. Title, Kusan Pan Chairs NUFC Congress Session Communicate Issue. Voice of NUFC in bracket, clandestine in Cambodia to Cambodia, 11.30 GMT, 26 February 1975. I'm going to read two extracts, both on the same page. First, quote, on 24 and 25 February 1975, the Great National Congress held its second session in an area of the Liberated Zone under the chairmanship of Mr. Q. Sampan, RGNUC Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of National Defence, and CPNLAF Commander in Chief. And further down, paragraph Numbered paragraph one. Concerning the seven traitors in Phnom Penh, the National Congress has decided as follows. Traitors Ronald, Sirik Mata, Son Yok Tan, Cheng Hang, Jin Tam, Eun Tam, Long Bore, Long Bore, and Sustainer Fernandez are the chiefs of the traitors and ringleaders of the treacherous anti-national coup d'etat, which overthrew the independence, peace, and neutrality of Cambodia. Then skipping one sentence, quote, on behalf of the NUFC, RGNUC and CPNLAF, the National Congress declared it absolutely necessary to kill these seven traitors for their treason against the nation and their fascist, corrupt, criminal acts unprecedented in Cambodia history. Can I ask you first, are these the seven traitors that you mentioned just a moment ago? Some And is this uh, a broadcast you heard at the time, or is it consistent with broadcasts you, you heard at the time? Uh, I myself never heard. Uh, personally heard the broadcast, but we saw these uh, uh, reports uh, with those quotations. Was uh, the intended, apparently intended fate of these seven traitors for this decision? Uh, was that something that you knew uh, in the months or weeks leading up to the 17th of April? Yes. And, uh, there was a lot of talk about it. Thank you. Now, as I said, we're going to move to the events that followed uh, your arrest and um, the, particularly the, the treatment 
that you describe in your diary of certain officials of the Khmer Republic regime. First, if I can look at page, this is at pages 66 to 67 of your diary. ERN 00898274425. There is a, a, a broadcast that you describe. And it is, you describe essentially the, the interruption of the radio broadcast by a communist spokesman. And you say the following. The broadcast was interrupted by a communist spokesman who said abruptly, quote, we did not come here to talk. Later, insurgent broadcasts said, we entered Phnom Penh not for negotiation, but as conquerors. We have completely defeated the clique of the traitor or not. We therefore call on all commanders of the traitor units to lay down arms and surrender. Any soldier who refuses shall be severely punished. And then the next broadcast, you describe as follows, quote, another message broadcast several times invited, quote, all ministers and generals who have not run away to come and meet with us immediately at the Ministry of Information to help formulate measures to restore order, end of quote. Can I ask you uh, first, that broadcast in relation to uh, all ministers and generals being invited to go to the Ministry of Information. Is that something you heard yourself or is it something you heard from other people? Uh, I, uh, I got that from uh, a man who I, who I hired to listen to the radio that day while I was out in the streets. This was a day when the and the city. He was a teacher at a university. He came to the university. He took this quote down. And, uh, and in fact, it's one of the last things he did because he came back to the hotel and just brought me up to the hotel and then cleared out. And he had his family in the car. But he was carrying these notes and wanted me to have them. He, 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 was, uh, he was driving the car and he passed it through the window and, and I knew that was a family that wasn't really going there. Okay. Um, I'm going to now move on to uh, your description of what, what happened, what you witnessed at the Ministry of Information. This is at pages 69 and 70 of the diary. And it continues on to 71 as well. Um, the ERN in English is 00898277 and the following two pages. You say the following on page 69. Quote, we head for the information ministry because of the earlier broadcasts asking high officials of the old regime to report there. When we arrive, about 50 prisoners are standing outside the building, which seems to be the insurgents' temporary headquarters. Among the prisoners are Brigadier General Lon Nol, younger brother of Marshal Lon Nol, Brigadier General Chim Chun, who was close to the Marshal. Other generals and cabinet ministers are also there, very uneasy but trying to appear calm. Now, can I ask you first, 
I'll start with a different question. Um, were you able to personally recognize these generals uh, and cabinet ministers, or these people that you knew uh, previously as people holding these positions in the Khmer Republic regime? Anything to, you know, any talks with and so forth. <laughs> I don't know who got killed. 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 I don't and he had stayed in the country, and every, a lot of people had suggested he leave with his family. And he was killed. And I spoke with him uh, at that building. We'll, and we'll come, we'll come to that conversation in a moment. Um, You, you describe uh, the, the rest of the scene, and I'll, I'll read the passages so everybody is aware of um, what is contained in the diary. On page, this will be page 17 in your version, Mr. Schamberg. Quote, after a few minutes, a man with a bullhorn lines up the prisoners into three groups, military, government officials, and civilians. We newsmen were also lined up to one side. An officer, he seemed important and was probably a leading general, though his black pajama uniform bore no markings, and he declined to give his name, stepped forward and made an extremely conciliatory speech to the prisoners. He said that they were he said that there were only seven traitors, that other officials would be dealt with equitably, and he asked for their cooperation. You, you then actually spoke to this uh, military leader, according to the diary. Can I ask you first, how many soldiers did you see uh, securing uh, these three groups and dividing them up, as, as you just described in, in that diary. Uh, uh, ten to fifteen of tr uh, troops. They kept circling these groups. Watching watching them and circling. Thank you. Some Okun. For the avoidance of doubt, um, were, were these uh, Khmer Rouge troops? Was this a Khmer Rouge commander? Yes. Thank you. You then describe a conversation this military leader had with journalists. And you say the following, quote, as the conversation continues, Long Long steps forward and quietly asks a French newsman to ask the insurgent leader if the prisoners here today or other Cambodian officials can leave the country if they wish to. A few moments later, the newsman gets a chance to ask the question. The military leader laughs, laughs softly. Quote, it will depend on the government, he says. They will make the regulations. He says he is only a military leader 
ដោយយកដល់ថាពិបាលនោះឆ្លើយបានដែលគឺអាគ្រីវ៉ែលវិញ the next uh, event that happens is the arrival of, of Long Beret. And you describe it in the following terms. Quote, while we talk, Long Beret arrives. His wife has, has driven him up in their Mercedes. The first thing he does is walk over to one of the ranking insurgent officers and grasp his hand for a long time, wordlessly. He was dressed in an aqua polo shirt and tan trousers, and he looked terrible. His eyes were puffed into slits. Perhaps he has been crying. He and Sirik Matak are the only two of the seven traitors marked for execution who have not fled the country. He had been articulate on the telephone last night. Now he's having difficulty speaking. I tried to ask him some questions, but he can only mumble yes, no, and thank you. So conversation is impossible. Can you describe for us what else happened once he arrived and greeted the Khmer Rouge officer and you attempted to have a conversation with him? What, what, what happened to him next? ตามมาไว้กัดลาวตกตรูเลิกรูปกอดรอยหมอใช่ Let's not get arrested again in my went through my head. And ដោយសម្រាប់ពុនយើងនិយាយអំពីនៅស្ថានទូតបារាំងយើងសេចក្តីបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានប
Now, before we leave this, uh, these events at, at the Ministry of Information, I wish to uh, play you uh, a short video clip, um, which is also on the case file. Uh, it's, it's from a documentary uh, called Pot, The Killing Embrace. Mr. President, the document number is E3-2355-R. And the ERNs are V0017254. It's only a 40-second um, segment, video segment, and it has been already uh, played in court. Uh, with your permission, Mr. President, I'd like to first play it in full for 40 seconds, and then we can look at particular specific um, images. Now, Mr. Schamberg, it, it is a documentary, so it has a voiceover. I'm going to ask you to ignore the voiceover. Uh, it's not relevant for our purposes. Um, what is relevant is your evidence and the images that are shown. Um, so we will play the video first and see whether it uh, contains any images that you recognize. The AV unit can play it now. And in silence, the population has long been isolated, and there is nothing to strange our children with blank, expressionless faces. But are they not coming too? Surely they will not harm their own people. Similarly bewildered, the guerrillas are illiterate peasants, most of whom have never seen city streets or cars or modern appliances. But they have been indoctrinated to see city dwellers as parasites who've drained the wealth from the countryside, people who have failed the revolution. First orders to round up and execute all those who are linked to the non-nol establishment. Moments after this photograph is taken, this group of MPs and bureaucrats are led to a nearby tennis court and massacre. Thank you, Mr. President. Now, Mr. Schamberg, um, Look, Schoenberg. If you were able to see that, can I first check? Were you able to see that uh, those images clearly? There was, in the final seconds uh, of that video, there was a hand shot from right to left, uh, which showed a number of people standing. Uh, is that a location that you, that you uh, can identify? No, not really. I'm going to um, just show it to you on the screen and see um, if, if, if it does refresh your memory. If it doesn't, we will move on quickly. If I can ask the AV unit to just play from the video again from second 36 to, to the end of the video, see if that so that we can just all see that again. ដើម្បីយើងបានឃើញទាំងអស់គ្នា after this photograph is taken, this group of MPs and bureaucrats are led to a nearby tennis court and massacre. That was a little bit later than, uh, than we wished, but um, does it in any way um, refresh your memory? Is it, is it a, a, a gathering event you saw? I myself 
ហើយក៏មានអាងហើយទឹកនៅទីនោះផងដែរ <coughs> ជាដើម្បីហើយនៅថ្ងៃនោះគឺថាអាចមានការកាត់សម្លាប់ um, I'd like to fast forward in time to the 19th of April an entry in your diary which is at page 82 and you say the following so at this stage you are in the french embassy of course and you describe what you what you saw and heard. Quote, at about 4:30 p.m. a loudspeaker truck passes the embassy two or three times blaring the message there are still traitors and super traitors in the city we must look for them we think it's ominous that they're doing this in front of the embassy ពីការគួរឲ្យផ្លាញ់ the high officials who have been hiding there at 2.30 p.m. in a dismal drizzle a squad of heavily armed soldiers pulls up to the gate in a jeep in a sanitation truck there is some talk with Dirac at the gate and then he goes inside within minutes the ones they want start coming out there are a dozen មានរដ្ឋាភិបាលចង់បាននេះគឺចាប់ផ្ដើមដើរចេញមកក្រៅពួកគេគឺមានអេរ៉ែកទៅទៅ and then moving on to the next paragraph, the prisoners are put in the open back of the sanitation truck. For several minutes, they just sit huddled there in the rain. Then, a few minutes past 3 p.m., the truck and the jeep slowly pull away from the embassy, like a funeral cortege. Were these events that you personally observed the um, surrender of Sirik Matak and, and Hong Bon Ho as well as other people. I witnessed it, yes. Was pretty hard to watch. You describe them as the ones they want. Um, can you tell us why you use those, those words? The ones they want. The ones they want. Yes, you describe these people as, as the ones they want. As in the Khmer Rouge want. Well, I, 
ជាកាបតើគឺខ្ញុំតែសេរដោយសារតែខ្ញុំបានឃើញអ្វីដែលបានកើតឡើងខ្មែរក្រហមបានមកដល់ហើយបាននិយាយថាមានមនុស្សន
Thank you. Thank you. Um, in the telegram, there is a reference from there is a reference to an alternatum from a city committee. Can you help us with, with what that may relate to? Uh, you also mentioned a, a committee in in your diary. Do you know anything about this, uh, this body? Um, I'm going to um, show you, with the President's permission, a photograph and see if you recognize uh, individuals in that. Uh, Mr. President, this is E190. .1.307. It's a Newsweek magazine article uh, dated the 19th of May 1975. Um, it is not authored by Mr. Schamberg, but it includes um, uh, references or summaries of his descriptions of the events. Uh, with your permission, I'll, I'll uh, show a, a photograph from that article to the witness. Thank you. The photograph is really only um, relatively clear in the English uh, version, and that is at Khmer, uh, ERN, English ERN 00445261. And I'm going to uh, ask my assistant to display that on the screen uh, for us. With your permission, Mr. President. Can I ask whether you uh, have a copy before you, Mr. Schamberg? If you can just give us a moment um, to locate it here and, and display it for the judges and, and everybody in the courtroom. It's a famous picture, I don't, but I never met the man. Okay, we have that image now ready to display. Um, the, if the AV unit could assist us to uh, show it on the screens for everybody in the courtroom. The caption says, No sanctuary, Hong Bon Ho is ousted by the French. Can I ask you first whether you recognize that individual? Uh, is that Hong Bon Ho as far as you recall? I've seen that picture. I did not see the event. Friends of mine who had met him, that's who it was. And then there was a story to go with it that he had a bunch of uh, of, of money in a, in a suitcase at such and such. And such. But I never, I never saw this happen. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's, not, it's just not a, a piece of the, uh, the events that I paid attention Thank to. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on from that uh, particular photograph. Dealing with um, uh, these events, again, uh, removal of uh, senior Khmer Republic officials from the embassy, um, you provide further descriptions at pages 95, 96, and 97, uh, again, 
Tổng bộ cây sập bầm tám cây sập bầm mũi cây sập bầm bì ông lễ sơn sơn bảy sập bầm bốn bảy sập bảy sơn bảy nâng tổng bộ bàn to bàn to You're describing here a, a conversation you had on the 23rd of April with a, a Khmer-speaking French businessman who had attended some of the negotiations with the Khmer Rouge or between the Khmer Rouge and the embassy officials. And these are some of the things that, that he reported to you. Quote, the Khmer Rouge say they are still cleaning out military people from the old regime who have gone into hiding in the city, which is why this zone is still under military and not political control. A little bit further down on the same page, you say, Quote, he says, we have lost a week toward our evacuation because of the time it took to extract the big fish like Sirik Matak from the embassy. And a little bit again further down, uh, three paragraphs down, quote, he says, the Khmer Rouge refer to the people still hiding in the city as, quote, wild rats. The Khmer Rouge are much less suspicious of the embassy, he says, now that those hiding in the embassy have been turned over. Can you confirm for us that that was the information you received that, uh, from this man, from the discussions he took part in, that searches had continued for Khmer Republic officials? That's exactly what he told me. And there's another quote, um, or rather another passage on the next page. Uh, quote, the Frenchman says that when the large main group of Cambodians left the embassy two days ago, they were taken to the municipal stadium where, quote, the important people were weeded out and taken away in trucks, and the others were then allowed to go up the road. He has the impression, which we all share, that the Khmer Rouge had a very good network of informers and agents in the city long before their victory. Do you recall whether that description he gave about the weeding out of important people from the trucks um, that had left the embassy? Um, do you recall if that's something that, that he uh, had been told or heard in the meetings? I, I can't vouch for that. Um, because I really don't know if that actually happened. And, uh, a, a lot of things, you know, probably did happen in those early days, but I didn't know uh, anything about that. And, and, uh, uh, and uh, just as a, uh, a, 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 let's say, a guiding uh, event, uh, 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 Cambodian stringers, photographers, and so forth, we left embassy a day before the Sir Matak and they, they just wanted to get out alone and they didn't want to be in a big group and, uh, and that was, that was Prans, you know his sort of sensory organs being right again. Uh, I don't know how it relates to that. Uh, to what the businessman told Thank you. With respect to the um, departure of the other Cambodian nationals um, from, from the compound. Uh, while we're discussing that, I'll just read to you another brief passage from the book, from the diary, pages 83 to 84, English ERM 00898291-2. This is an, an April 20 entry, so it, it occurs a little earlier in time. 
uh, and the reason I'm reading it here is it provides some context to the departure of the Cambodians from the embassy. And you've touched on this a little bit. Quote, at about 7.30 there is bad news. Members of the embassy staff start moving around the compound, telling Cambodians without French papers that they must leave and join the track into the countryside. We'd like to help you, but there is no way, one Frenchman said to them. We can't take you to France. If you stay here, there could be trouble. Two paragraphs down. You say the following, a little later, we learned that the French advice to the Cambodians was the result of new directives from the Khmer Rouge. In the latest meetings, they have told the consul, Dirac, that they no longer consider this an embassy, but merely a regroupment zone for foreigners, which ruled out the possibility of asylum and made the Cambodians' departure essential. Can you uh, assist us with these developments um, with respect to the embassy being deemed a mere recruitment zone? Um, what were you told about that uh, by Dirac or others who had communicated with the Khmer Rouge? I think that the paragraph you just read was obviously felt terrible about it. So he, and he didn't, he, his government didn't allow, you know, allow him. Um, and from what you were able to observe, with the exception of those that were able to or that had foreign passports, um, did all the Cambodians uh, leave the embassy in the following days. Not exactly all, but almost all. Some of Hung around and thought that they might be able to uh, hitch a ride. And they came home. With the help of Francois Bizot, and so people couldn't tell colors of skin and so on and so on. And he had people climb over the sides of the truck instead of coming up the back. And I don't know how many. 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 And, and that I didn't know the man wasn't a woman, as far as I could tell. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm going to move on to a new topic. Is this a, a good time to break? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. ពីនឹងសាមសិបនាទីរសៀលជាងចូលវិញដើម្បីបន្តកិច្ចដំណើរការសម្ណាការ <coughs> ស្រាប់សក្តិកម្មអសក្តិសៃរូបនេះនឹងបន្តធ្វើនៅព្រឹកថ្ងៃស្អែកចាប់ដើមពីម៉ោង 8 
ដោយសារសម្រាប់ការស្ដាប់ទៅខេកម្មលោកត្រូវបន្តធ្វើនៅថ្ងៃស្អែកទៀតដូច្នេះអង្គ Yes, Your Honor, it's clear. But Lopatian, you Som Jane Groucho.